Now let us look at the third stanza. Your old said the youth, and your jaws are too weak for anything tougher than sweet. Yet you finish the goose with the bonds and the beak. Pray, how did you manage to do it? Now the son is asking his father the third question. And even the third question begins with the statement that Father William is an old man. Okay. So he tells his father, Father William, you are old, but something surprises me. What is that? Your jaws are too weak now, I know, because you are old. What is that jaw? Jaw is a bone on which our teeth are set. We got two jaws, upper jaw and the lower jaw. When a man becomes old, naturally his jaws become weak. So since Father William is an old man, he presumes, son presumes that his jaws should be very weak. But Father William does something that astonishes the young man. That is, he eats the goose, goose is just like chicken. He eats a goose with its beak and the bones. But the young man knows that father's teeth and jaws or big jaws are fit to eat just suet. Suet is animal fat. Okay? Actually it is a suet pudding. Suet pudding is usually given to people who are ill because that can be easily digested. But this old man who should eat just the suet pudding has got the courage, has got the strength to eat the goose with its beak and bones. The young boy gets surprised and he asks his father this question. Please tell me, how do you manage to do it? Now the father's reply. In my youth, said his father, I took to the law and argued each case with my wife and the muscular strength which it gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my life. Now he tells him, when he was young, like the young boy now, when I was your age, I took up law. Took up law means I practiced law. Okay. A lawyer has to argue his cases in the court. He doesn't argue at home, right? Nobody does it. But Father William tells him that he used to argue each and every case at home with his wife as a rehearsal. Okay? So that was a very good practice for Father William. And he tells a young son, I used to argue each case with my wife at home. And that continuous argument, that continuous talking in which I indulged at home gave my jaws enormous strength, muscular strength, enormous, lot of strength. So because of the strength which I developed in those days by talking to my wife, today my jaws continue to be very strong and as a result I can eat not just with pudding, I can eat the goose with its bones and the beak. That's the secret of my energy. So the, the old man tells him, I argued each case with my wife and the muscular strength, enormous strength, the great strength, which it, it is here talking with my wife, okay, arguing with my wife gave it to my jaw has lasted has continued that strength which i got in those days has continued even that continues even today 
So my jaws, don't laugh at me by saying that my jaws are weak, my teeth are weak. My jaws continue to be strong because of my argument with my wife at home. Okay. Now, the next question asked by the young man. You are old, said the youth. One would hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever. Yet you balance an eel on the end of your nose. What made you so awfully clever? Even the fourth question begins with the statement that Father William is an old man. So the son has got another person to ask him. He tells him, you are old no doubt. At your age, anybody would think that your eyes are weak. As a man grows older, his eyes become weaker and weaker. No doubt about it. It happens to everybody. So anybody would think that your eyes are not strong. One would hardly, hardly, not at all, never will believe that your, eye, your eyes are as strong as ever. Nobody would think so. Nobody would think that your eye was as steady as ever. Since you are old, your eyes have to be weak. You can't have a sharp vision. Nobody will believe if you tell them that you've got a strong vision, your eyes are strong. No, but still the other day, I saw you balancing an eel on the end of your nose. I saw you balancing, keeping an eel on the end of your nose. What is an eel? Eel is a fish that looks like a snake. Okay? There is a slippery fish that looks like a snake. And what does this old man do? This old man keeps that eel on the end of his nose and tries to balance it. Is it easy? Oh, awfully difficult. But the old man does it very well, without any mistake. Okay? He's very good at doing it. So that's why the young man feels shocked. Right? He feels surprised. What made you so awfully clever? Now he's asking him, how can you have so much of cleverness? So much of concentration how can your eyes be very, very strong? Awfully clever. Awfully means greatly, immensely clever. At your age, how can you have so much of concentration? Will you tell me? Now, father tells him, Look, I have answered three questions which you have asked me. And that's enough. Now, father refuses to answer the fourth question. Not because he doesn't know the answer, but because he thinks that enough is enough. He thinks that he cannot go on answering all the questions asked by his son. Okay, next slide. I have answered three questions. That's enough, said his father. Don't give yourself A's. What does it mean? Don't give yourself A's means don't act over smart. Don't think that you are superior to everybody. Don't think that you are better than me. Oh no. When you ask me questions like this, I get a feeling that you are acting, you are trying to be over smart. Should never do it. So stop asking me any, long, any more questions. Enough of your questions. Don't give yourself a yes, don't act great by asking me questions one after another. Do you think I can sit here all day to and and listen to such stuff? Stuff here, subject. It means the questions asked by the son. So he's asking him, do you think that I don't have any other work now? 
Do you think that I can sit here idly and keep on answering and go on answering your questions, all the stupid questions that you are asking me? Impossible. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff, such nonsensical questions that you are asking me? Be off, get lost. Stop your questions, get lost. Otherwise, what will I do? I'll punish you, I'll kick you downstairs. So, father snubs him. Okay? Father shouts at him by telling him that enough of his questions, get lost. If you don't do this, I'll kick you downstairs. Okay? Father refuses to answer the fourth question because he thinks that, he realizes that the son is trying to be over smart by asking his father many, many questions. And father is not in a mood to encourage this stupidity on the part of the son. So he refuses to answer the questions and there ends the poem. Now you know that the poem is structured as a dialogue between the father and the son. It humorously describes the generation gap that exists between the old man and his son. So the poem, the major theme of the poem is the generation gap. The son does not understand the greatness of the father. Okay? And father does not endorse what the son thinks. There is a wide gap between the old man's generation and the young man's generation. There is a gap. Right? The son who seems to be very pompous, very haughty, very arrogant, very proud of himself, tries to irritate his father by telling him every time that he is old. He is old. Look at these questions. He asks four questions and every question begins with the statement that Father William, you are old. So the son is deliberately trying to insult his father by telling him that he is old. But father doesn't get angry. He doesn't lose his school. And what does he do? He makes the son understand or realize that age is just a number. Okay. Age does not matter at all. How does he show that? He shows this. He doesn't tell him so, but he shows it by doing many, many incredible things even at his age. The things which cannot be done by his son who is very young. So by doing these things and by telling the son how he derived so much of strength and confidence and courage, he makes, he tries to make his son understand that he is better, much, much better than his son. Now, father is very strong today. He can do whatever he feels like doing because he had a very good foundation in the past when he was young. He came up the hard way. He had to do his exercise. He had to save his money for the sake of his children. But look at the son in contrast. The son seems to be very careless. The son seems to be quite indifferent. And the son is not in a position to understand the sacrifice made by his father when he was young. That's the reason why he tries to tease him by telling him every time that father you are old, father you are old. 
father see look at the father now nothing came easily to him he had to work hard for each and everything so he tries to tell his son that he did not waste money on maintaining his physique how do you maintain his physique by doing regular exercises and using homemade remedies or cheap oil man or cheap oil he never went to a gym to maintain his body never as ancestors do nowadays so he saved so much of money he worked hard saved so much of money for the sake of his children which cannot be understood easily by his son so hearing the replies of the father of his father gradually the son's attitude towards father changes gradually it keeps changing in the beginning he was indifferent to his father he tried to tease his father try to make fun of his father but towards the end he begins to show respect for his father's greatness he begins to admire he doesn't say that but see when father snubs him does he say anything no he just keeps quiet because by then he understood that father was very very tough father was very strong father was very great unlike him 